poor we will always have with us, but why the hunger? This was the driving theme that inspired a worldwide movement more than 50 years ago. The United States of America is one of the most industrialized producers of food in the entire world. Here in the U.S., we are so successful at food production that every day, nearly 40% of food produced in America will go uneaten or discarded. But why the hunger? Hi, I'm Lisa Notero, Chief Development Officer at St. Mary's Food Bank. For more than a century, soup kitchens, shelters, and local churches have been providing free meals to those in need. While this appeared to be helpful, there was a problem. These places can provide only one meal at a time, and only to those who are physically able to show up. You see, a place where a family or a shelter could get a week's worth of groceries for all the people they feed simply did not exist. Until the 1960s, when a compassionate man named John Van Hengel, along with a few other resourceful Phoenicians, came up with a simple yet a groundbreaking notion. Gather food where there is an abundance and deliver it to those in need. A simple thought that no one had dreamt prior to 1967. And St. Mary's tie-up was because St. Mary's was the ones, were the ones that gave us our impetus. They gave us our building to start with and also they loaned me $3,000 to get this off the ground, which we paid back the first year. So, with a $3,000 loan from his church, St. Mary's Basilica, John Van Hengel secured an old abandoned bakery in South Phoenix and opened St. Mary's Food Bank, the world's first food bank. So, why the name Food Bank? The lady that we refer to that gave us the name St. Mary's Food Bank was a lady that I uh, was called over to meet one day by one of the social service agencies and they said, this lady has 10 children and she's been feeding all these children out of the dumpster behind one of the local supermarkets. And of course I was involved at that time in gathering food and storing it. We didn't have a name for our program at the time and she took me over to the dumpster and showed me the food and it was unbelievable what was being tossed out. About two days later she came back again and she said, you see these children, they're all healthy. And I said, my gosh, they're a real healthy looking bunch. And she said, there should be some kind of a place where people could put in food for those of us in need and then we could take it out. And she said, kind of a bank like. And she said, a bank of food. And I said, that's it, food bank. And so that's where the name came from. While St. Mary's Food Bank may have invented the first food bank, they're certainly not the only one today. After the first food bank launched in Phoenix, the word quickly spread and other states began to follow John's lead. By 1977, there were food banks in 18 cities across the country. As the number of food banks began to increase, John created a national organization for food banks, and in 1979, he established Second Harvest, later called America's Second Harvest, the nation's food bank network. In 2008, the network changed its name to Feeding America to better reflect the mission of the organization. In 1984, food banking had reached Europe with the establishment of the first food bank in France. By 1999, there were more than 50,000 food pantries established across the U.S., many of which being supplied with food from area food banks. With so many new food banks operating across the world, the Global Food Banking Network was established in 2006. Currently, there are more than 200 food banks across the United States and Puerto Rico. Globally, there are hundreds of food banks across 25 countries. When the global pandemic began in 2020, no nonprofit group was more important than local food banks. With temporary food shortages, unemployment, and an uncertain future, food banks all around the world saw more demand than ever before. The food bank is essentially a high volume food distribution center. It's a place where people and businesses can donate excess food so that people in need can withdraw that food to feed their families. Today, St. Mary's has evolved from the world's first food bank to an organization that utilizes sophisticated technology and logistics to drive efficiency so that we may feed the people within our community. There are people in our community who are hurting and in need. 
With the support of key private sector relationships, what was once considered the home of dented canned food is now home to fresh produce, dairy, eggs, meat, starches, bottled water, and more. More than 40% of all the food distributed by St. Mary's Food Bank is fresh Arizona-grown produce. We get a lot of our food primarily from local donors. That's retailers, it could be growers, distribution centers, really uh, anybody who's working with food. Retailers are big providers for perishable items. Uh, you go to the produce section at any grocery store and not everything in there is going to sell, but at the same time, the retailers partner with us because they want to make sure that the food's getting to somebody that can use it, and, and that's where we come in. Local farmers are really helpful to us. They might have a lot of growth in one season, and maybe they're growing more cantaloupes or they're growing more cabbage than the market requires currently, so all this excess produce that they have that's sitting in the field, they don't want it just sitting there. They want to make sure that it's getting to somebody who can use it, and that's where we come in, and we're able to pick up that produce, we bring it back here, and then we're able to get it out to the communities throughout the state of Arizona. We have relationships with hundreds of retailers, hundreds of farmers, donors, all, all shapes and sizes. They have product that's maybe not moving, that they have too much of, and we're able to connect their product to somebody who can use it. Because of these efficiencies, St. Mary's Food Bank is able to provide food assistance to more than two-thirds of Arizona, from Phoenix to the northern border and everywhere in between. The reality is the vast majority of the people coming to the food bank have jobs. They just can't handle an unexpected expense, like a medical bill, a car repair, or a high power bill. And so that's where St. Mary's comes in, to help fill that gap when they're in need. He's an Army vet, and I'm proud of him. I get a lot of people as I go up down the street say thank you for serving the country. You'd be surprised. A lot of people. Without St. Mary's, we would literally have starved without the needs that we are supplied by St. Mary's. So yes, uh, yes we have money, but not enough to cover all of our needs. Choices like uh, who eats the dogs, the cats, or us? Do we, we let go a bill so we can eat this month? That sort of thing goes through our minds every month. Knowing that it's there and that we, we have access means one less worry about where our, our, our money goes. We know that it's there for us if we need it, and all we have to do is explore the avenues to help that. And if I could donate, I'd donate to St. Mary's. To the donors, you're doing an inestimable service for people who can't get where they need to go to get what they need. You see us in our circumstances, so here's where it goes. I'm living on my social security and that covers rent. Barely. When I found out that that my my retirement was gone, I I think I cried for about a month. I thought, okay, what am I going to do now? I'm thankful to to St. Mary's Food Bank for uh, giving me the the food and the things that I needed on a daily basis. That. I knew I couldn't afford to just go walk into the store and buy. So after my retirement was lost, I was really appreciative of, of St. Mary's and I really appreciate the food that they give me now. So when the pandemic started, my husband didn't work as much and uh, well, we decided to come to St. Mary's and it's been really helpful. Because of St. Mary's, we've been able to pay the light bill, the water bill, it has helped us. And I love the quality of the food. It's fresh, it's uh, meat, veggies, dairy, it's really good. People that come to us for help are all walks of life. And they are a cross section of our community. People of all faiths, people of all ages, people of all backgrounds. We're here to help them. Inflation is even impacting our operation. 
the price of fuel, the price of food that we buy, and it's putting pressure on us on a day-to-day -day basis. And so the dollars that we have don't go as far as we go to fill the baskets of need within our community. And it's only because of the commitments from our donors that we're able to be there and meet the need when we see the number of people coming to us for help. There's no shame in asking for food assistance. There's only respect and compassion for better days ahead. At the Knight Center in Phoenix and at the Surprise Arizona location, thousands of food assistance boxes are distributed to families each day. The process is less intimidating than most people think. Caring professionals and volunteers guide people through every step, assuring they receive the support and services they need. When I come to St. Mary's Food Bank, um, I like how I get treated. Um, they're really nice, they're really helpful. People who can't make it to the food bank are still eligible to receive food assistance. St. Mary's delivers food to more than 40 rural and urban locations throughout central and northern Arizona with its mobile pantry program. A St. Mary's food bank truck brings perishable food directly to neighbors in the greatest need. Pallets of fruit, vegetables, and bread are available for thousands of families needing the nutritious food. This massive endeavor is accomplished through a fleet of nearly 80 vehicles that travel millions of miles annually to distribute, rescue food, meet with partner agencies, and mobile pantry sites. That's as many miles as traveling around the world more than 60 times. Our mobile distributions are a pop-up form of our bricks and mortar locations. One of the silver linings of the pandemic, it forced us to be more agile in how we distribute food. We currently have about 200 mobile distributions that happen throughout the state on a monthly basis. Some of our agencies host these and some of these are run by our own staff. They're happening in rural areas, in, in urban areas throughout the state of Arizona. My team is constantly looking at new partnerships uh, to do home deliveries as well as pop-up deliveries. The home delivery program is a program for families in need who are unable to get to the food bank. We work with delivery partners to bring the food to their door to make food access easier. These are people who are physically, mentally, uh, or lack the physical transportation to get to and from the food bank each time. Homebound delivery is essential. I'm realizing more and more every year that nutrition, it really counts. When the homebound people, at least for myself, when the driver comes, I mark it. I know when they're coming and it's kind of like something I look forward to every month. And having uh, the nutrition is something I can count on, and that's a wonderful thing. Okay, I myself, I receive a food box. I'm a senior, and so I like the food box that they give me because it helps me also all through the month. We started expanding the home delivery program because of COVID-19, so we can start serving more people who are unable to get to the food bank. Since January of 2020, our numbers of home delivery has more than tripled. In addition to directly supporting people and families within the community, St. Mary's Food Bank provides the bulk of its food donations to more than 900 other nonprofits through Central and Northern Arizona, including the Navajo Nation and other tribal lands. We have a fleet of nearly 80 vehicles, and we use these vehicles to move food into our agency partners, schools, bricks and mortar food pantries, um, after school programs, churches, uh, any number of community organizations. Our agency network is how we distribute over 250,000 pounds a day. Through our partner agencies, we distribute about 10 million pounds of food per month. The challenges of food insecurity on tribal lands continue to be quite large. However, the trust and the relationships we've built over the years continue to serve us well to meet the needs of the people in those communities. We continue to reach more and more people on tribal lands to ensure they have the food and nutrition that they need. We continue to refine our tribal food box. It's a box of food, of culturally relevant food to the people that we're serving on the tribal lands. But more importantly, is we're purchasing many of those items from tribal businesses and entities thereby also providing an economic benefit to the people that we're serving. The Navajo Nation, for example, is one of the most impoverished areas in the nation, not just in our state. So at St. Mary's, we identified this a few years ago, 
and we've decided that it's, that's going to be an area of focus for us. So a big part of what we do in serving the two-thirds of the state of Arizona is partnering with tribal, tribal communities. We have partnerships with 15 tribal communities in the state of Arizona, the largest of which is the Navajo Nation. Without St. Mary's Food Bank, myself, I'm retired. I lost my wife 10 years ago, so it's just myself. But what food banks gives me, I share with whoever needs it, like my grandkids, great grandkids. Because I'm diabetic, it's very important for me to eat healthy. The nourishment we get from St. Mary's is almost like medicine. My name is Lucy. I'm from the Hopi tribe, and I am 79 years old. Right now, the elders really appreciate it, and then some of the younger generation that are still working aren't working anymore because of, of the shutdown. So right now, they would really appreciate the food, you know, and uh, especially the fresh food. They like the fresh stuff, but they do appreciate the food and the stuff that is brought out there. Food access is much harder in those areas. There's a limited number of grocery stores. Families are historically traveling multiple hours maybe to get to the, uh, to the nearest grocery store. So we see a higher food insecurity rate. We see a higher unemployment rate. And so St. Mary's is here to help respond and to provide even more distributions and more food access opportunities throughout those areas. Innovation and efficiency has been a staple theme at St. Mary's Food Bank since inception. And that innovation has led to additional programs that have spawned the same overwhelming spirit of giving. After all, the St. Mary's Food Bank mission statement is to alleviate hunger through the gathering and distribution of food while encouraging self-sufficiency, collaboration, advocacy, and education. Following the notion, teach a person to fish and they could feed their family for life, St. Mary's Food Bank has created two programs, Community Kitchen and our Warehouse Training Program. We are a program that helps individuals who are looking to make a change in their life uh, provide for themselves. Uh, the mission is to help disadvantaged adults achieve self-sufficiency through training and job placement, but I look at it as a little bigger than that. I, I want to see people be successful. The main criteria to become a student, you're going to be facing some sort of barrier to employment, uh, whether that was an incarceration, whether that was uh, you're a victim of domestic violence, substance abuse and recovery. Um, I have some individuals who are 18 years old and have no hireable skills yet, have never really worked but are now in a position where they need to provide for themselves. So we're able to kind of give them that springboard into a career. They taught me a lot of life skills here. And they kept in touch with me after they got, because I went out and worked for a year out into the community. They found me a job and then um, they asked me to come back and, and interview for this position. So we are a 12-week program. You are here Monday through Friday from 7 to 3. So 40 hours a week for 12 weeks is a, is a huge commitment, but it is an investment in oneself. I even took a cut in pay from my job because this is where I wanted to be. I knew that I could relate to the students. I found friends here that you know I still talk to to this day. We encourage each other. The knife skills aside and the kitchen skills aside, it's the life skills portion. It's the birth or rebirth of self-confidence you see a lot in the students. Um, the ability to know that they have a skill they can take out into the world and provide for themselves when they've never been given that opportunity up until this point, I think is the most powerful piece. For me, it's not just teaching them how to cook, it's also teaching them how to, you know, how to become a better person. Teach a man to fish, right? And, and, and he never goes hungry, so we really sort of provide that piece. More than just helping those in need, we want to help those so they can help themselves. In addition to our community kitchen program, we offer a warehouse training program where we train people to operate forklifts and pallet jacks to get a job in a warehouse so they can take care of their families. Yeah, I was basically homeless and then I heard about the community kitchen program at St. Mary's. And so I decided to give them a call and uh, after the community kitchen program, they got me a job working in the industry at a restaurant. And uh, I worked there until the COVID-19 hit and uh, I was laid off, unfortunately, because they closed all the restaurants down. Well, basically what I was thinking was like, oh, what am I going to do now? I know a lot of families and, and, and individuals that, you know, got laid off in their jobs and stuff and they became homeless. Then I um, got a call the next day asking me if I was interested in working for St. Mary's. Here at St. Mary's Food Bank, 
I work in the warehouse and my basic duties are to keep the warehouse clean because it's very important because we handle food and we distribute food to keep the warehouse very clean. And I take pride in my job and I keep the warehouse spotless. You know, and, and, and that makes me feel good that I know I have received numbers of compliments from, from the company and individuals that come on tours that say how spotless my warehouse looks. So when I lost my job and everything, uh, we, I lost my house. So we stayed with my wife's sister. And we still had to put food on the table, so we came here. It was really hard coming the first time. Really a shame. Uh, I thought my pride was, you know, was big, but that food helped us. It helped us to the fullest. The funny thing is, though, my wife asked me, she said, why don't you try to get a job at the at St. Mary's Food Bank? And uh, next thing you know, I got the job. You know, I, I seen people who look just like me with their heads down. And I look over to them and that, that was me. My life is really good right now, working for the food bank, helping others. Right now, helping people, that's all I can do. I, I cannot leave this job because I know where they've been. And I, I've been right where they are though. So, when someone comes to us who has a barrier to employment, we have two choices, culinary training, warehouse training. Either way, it helps people get back on their own two feet no longer needing the food bank and able to rely upon themselves. The compassion for helping those in need is especially great when addressing child hunger. One in four children in Arizona live in poverty, one of the highest rates in the nation. While they may have breakfast and lunch at school, they might not get enough food at night and on the weekends. Hence, Kids Cafe, a St. Mary's Food Bank program that ensures children get one more healthy meal before they leave school at the end of the day. More than one million healthy meals are delivered annually to students in after school and summer programs. What's more, the Backpack program sends chronically hungry children home with food on Fridays to ensure they have something to eat over the weekend. The number of families that take advantage of the food bank here at Constitution is approximately, I would say, at least half of our families. The benefits that this provides through St. Mary's to be able to provide food for our families and our students is just making sure that they're getting what they need nutrition-wise. Research will show that students that are eating and are healthy um, can pay more attention during class time, are more focused and awake, um, and that helps with achievement and grades and just overall performance. And that St. Mary's is part of our family also um, to be able to meet their needs um, throughout, throughout the month and throughout the school year. And we do it all summer long. This resource is available so that uh, the needs can be met um, and so that families don't have to be ashamed about receiving um, the, the assistance that is provided for them through St. Mary's Food Bank. We see folks who um, are out of work. We see folks who are, are part of the working poor, um, who come in, who are in need. Uh, you know, poverty affects all kinds of people in all types of situations. Maybe you're in the position that you can contribute, you can help another family, you can give to St. Mary's Food Bank. I eat breakfast because it helps me learn in class. I like apples, grapes, carrots, and lettuce. I think about three or four years ago is when we started um, our relationship with St. Mary's Food Bank. The needs are tremendous in this area and you know you can feel it. Every two weeks we provide a food box for 150 families. Without St. Mary's Food Bank School Pantry at Constitution, approximately 50% of our families would go without the food that they would need to take care of their families and have their kids in school ready to learn. If I didn't have breakfast, I think I would get a lower grade, like a D. If I missed a meal, I wouldn't be able to concentrate. It's hard to concentrate when you're hungry. There was a time that kids would come just late from wherever they're coming. They come in and they're like, I'm hungry, I didn't have breakfast. If they don't have dinner at home, it's either they just save, like they eat, they eat part of the kids' cafe meal and save it until they get hungry again. As the world's first food bank, St. Mary's Food Bank is a point of pride for Arizona. We're providing more than 250,000 meals to people every single day. We're only able to do this with the support of the community. Your donation is needed and it's important. 
With the Arizona Charitable Tax Credit, you can make a donation to St. Mary's Food Bank up to $800 and get it right back on your Arizona state taxes. Donation of $800 can provide 5,600 meals to people in need. We first got involved with the food bank with financial contributions, and, and honestly, the Arizona state tax credit was a big part of that. Our tax dollars were going to St. Mary's instead of projects that we didn't support. It's a way to pay my state taxes by doing something for the community. The idea that a mom would have to say to her kids, I can't give you that for dinner, or I don't have anything for you to eat for breakfast tomorrow, was a terrible thing for me to think about. The efficiency of St. Mary's Food Bank is just incredible. This is big time, and this is a place to really make a difference. I get more back by volunteering than I'm giving to the community. Being here and physically volunteering has become really important to us. Um, we have friends here, both in the volunteers and the staff. You know, this is, this, is, this is our tribe. We love being here. We miss not being here. So St. Mary's Food Bank is one of the organizations that gets the Arizona tax credit that people can donate their money to. To be able to give that $400 or $800 and donate it to St. Mary's, it's really helpful to be able to continue the great things that they do because it's more than just food. St. Mary's does a lot more for, for communities. Maybe you're in the position that you can contribute, you can help another family, you can give to St. Mary's Food Bank. Um, every little bit counts, um, every dollar counts, um, every minute counts. And I think if someone donates to an organization as credible as St. Mary's, that they're doing a wonderful thing. That it's life sustaining. This could be the difference between a good life and maybe a much lesser life. You should direct your tax credit to, towards St. Mary's because St. Mary's is a very efficient user of those funds. It offers children a chance to have a healthy meal every day. They provide the services that translate your dollars into re real help for real people. And if I could donate, I'd donate to St. Mary's. What started out as an innovative idea to help feed the hungry has blossomed into a worldwide movement. Currently, there are over 200 food banks in the United States and hundreds more around the world, helping tens of millions of people every day find their next meal and transition into self-sustainability, all thanks to a man and his desire to help those in need. We don't know what the future is going to bring, but with community support, we know we can handle whatever comes our way. The poor we will always have with us, but why the hungry? Since 1967, St. Mary's Food Bank remains a team of extraordinarily compassionate and innovative people who just happen to be operating the world's first food bank. Their number one goal remains to work themselves out of business when going out of business means ending hunger. And for that, tens of millions of people around the world are grateful. No one wants to need St. Mary's Food Bank, but we're built on community. It's our volunteers and donors who help us provide nutritious food to those in need with dignity, kindness, and respect. And with the Arizona Charitable Tax Credit, you can make a donation to St. Mary's Food Bank up to $800 and get it right back on your Arizona state taxes. Because no child should go to bed hungry. And with your help, they won't have to. stmarysfoodbank.org